Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making over this, I know, Longa Burger Basket. Uh, a lot of you are going to cringe when I paint this, which is what I'm going to do. And uh, But I will leave the signature on the bottom where it can be seen. Um, I know that Longa Burger is collectible. And I know that is very expensive, but um, but I use this one, and I use it to keep my Bible study materials in. And um, I don't have it because it's Longa Burger. I have it because it's a good solid basket, and I like the way it looks. But uh, I want to give it a makeover because I'm not crazy about this kind of what I call orangey. Uh, basket weave I just I don't care I don't care for that color and uh, so I'm just gonna give it a makeover and um, I have these in my store I've bought out collections before and I uh, just haven't had any luck selling them I've sold some here and there but I never get what they're worth and um, and uh, like I said they just don't sell that well so uh, don't feel bad painting this one, and I'm sorry if it offends a collector, but I'm going to be keeping this for a while, um, and I don't plan on selling it, so I'm just going to paint it to suit me. Uh, now, I'm using Dixie Belle in the color Drop Cloth on this, and it's covering really well in one coat, uh, and... Um, so I just give it a good coat all around the sides. Now I'm not going to paint that bottom because uh, I do feel bad painting over a signature uh, when an artist works so hard on a piece. Uh, but I will be staining that a different color and, uh, and the signature will still show through. I do love this basket. It's, it's a really good size and I like that it has the lid on it. Uh, so it's perfect for what I use it for, except uh, I'm just not crazy about the look. So, um, I hope that you'll like the transformation enough to not be angry at me for running its value. Now, after I've given this uh, a good coat all over uh, and let it dry, then we can move on to the next step. Now, I just turned this upside down so that I can neaten that uh, white edge around the outside. And again, I'm not going to be painting the bottom. I'll just be staining it a different color. Now, once I discovered antiquing wax, I very rarely uh, use oil stain on anything. Um, I just use an antiquing wax and either use it it uh, straight or I'll add a little water to it if I want to lighten it a little bit but the great thing about the antiquing wax is uh, it's very easy cleanup and it doesn't have all the fumes. Now I'm not going to worry about these little leather straps that are used for the hinges because it's just going to darken that a little bit and um, and it's just going to kind of blend it together more so it works well to just go over those with the with the antiquing wax also now i'm not going to worry with the inside of this basket but i will uh, do the inside of the of the lid here and i just put a good coat of the antiquing wax this one i have watered down just a little bit and um and then i'll just wipe that off good and then I'll be uh, putting a coat just around that little rim at the top. So I'll just be really careful uh, not to get um, get on the white. And if I get on it a little bit, that's not a, that's not a big deal because I am going to be taking my rag once I'm done wiping this uh, antiquing wax down and rubbing it over the entire surface. And somehow I did cut that out, but I just took that that uh, that rag that was saturated in in the uh, stain that I wiped, and just kind of rubbed it over the surface of the basket weave, and that just kind of made that basket weave stand out more, and gave it some dimension, and kind of married it with 
the stain color. Now, I picked out a stencil that I want to put on the front of this, and obviously, you can't stencil straight onto that basket because it just wouldn't work out. There's too many indentions, and you just wouldn't have a clean uh, finish at all. So, I just took this, uh, this scripture here, and I cut a piece of drop cloth, uh, or actually ripped a piece of drop, drop cloth because I did want those frayed edges in exactly the size of this stencil. And I made sure that that would fit on the front of this. And, um, and so now I'm just uh, doing my stencil in a couple of different colors. Now I've chosen this blue because I do have uh, a little bit of that accent color in my living room. And I'm doing the brown here just because I feel like it kind of pulls the, uh, the brown from the lid and stuff together. Um, I just needed something that would contrast it. And um, I wanted actually to do white, but I was afraid that white wouldn't show up on my um, drop cloth. And I'm always nervous with this next step because you just never know if you're going to have any bleeding. But I didn't have that here and I was happy with what I ended up with. And then, so now I'm going to just take some hot glue and glue this uh, fabric right in the middle of the front of this basket. And uh, when, you, when you do this step, make sure that you get really close to the edge so you don't have it pull up at all. Um, it's going to hold really, really well, but uh, you, want, you want those ends to lay down really well. And fabric glue isn't at all necessary here because obviously this will never be washed in the wash machine. So uh, that's really the only time that uh, fabric glue is necessary. And I love this scripture here, especially since this is going to be where all my uh, reading materials are for my quiet time. But I thought this turned out really cute and made such a difference. Okay, so this next flip is going to be a very simple flip. Uh, I found this basket and I've had it a while. I'm not even sure where I got it. Most likely at a Goodwill uh, and I most likely didn't pay over a dollar for it. Um, but it has a good wooden, wooden bottom uh, and I, I love that about it. Uh, but now the basket weave had almost a plasticky feel. I don't think that it was plastic. I think it just had a coating on it. So I was real concerned about whether or not this wax would take. Uh, but, but I did like how it turned out after all. So I'm just brushing that wax on. And it'll get down into those crevices. And then I'm just going to wipe uh put some pressure on it when I wipe that off and I'm going to do the entire basket the handle the inside and all the outside and uh, even the bottom and and just wipe it away and that's all that I do to this piece and it really makes a big difference now I'm showing you this Krylon clear wax here and I'm not sponsored by Krylon but uh, this is just a clear wax, and um, and I added some some off-white paint to it. And you can do this. I, I think I've mentioned in some of my other videos that you can do this with any color of paint. You can just take a clear wax and just add a few drops of whatever color you want that wax to be. And if you don't get it dark enough, then just add a little bit more. Um, but the clear wax is very versatile. And, you know, if that's the only, if you only buy one wax then uh, then I would buy the clear wax so that you can mix the other in. But now, those pasty waxes, I really haven't tried to, uh, to color them. Uh, so I'm not real sure how that would work. But with these more liquidy waxes, um, Krylon and Waverly, they're more liquidy. And uh, you can just mix any color that you want in those. If you have a little basket that you can try this on, you could even kind of practice with colors uh, because this is just such an easy flip. And, you know, some of these baskets you can buy for nothing. Um, and um, when I go to um, a yard sale or um, even an estate sale, you know, baskets are very cheap unless they're older baskets. This one would have probably done well with just the regular antiquing wax also. You know, it would just be
be that darker color to settle down into that and it would age it more but uh, yeah I wanted this one to uh, go in the vignette that I'm going to be posting at the end and I thought this color would would go better also spring is just around the corner so uh, I'm kind of drawn to these lighter colors uh, because they just uh, seem more springy to me now this wax is very messy and I'm sure you can see that it just gets all over my hands and it seems like uh, when you go to wash it that it, it doesn't want to come off uh, but just get your water hot and it cleans right up I've had it uh, I have I've had it on my hands for a while and still was able to get that off with with just a little bit of elbow grease but even the darker stains will will clean up good and even when they're down under your nails they seem like they clean up pretty well and with this process you can turn just about any basket into uh, something that just looks a lot nicer this one would be a good size for a little Easter basket uh, vignette maybe put you some um, uh, peat moth not peat moth uh, Spanish moth in it and uh, in maybe some fake eggs and a little bunny and this would be a cute little arrangement and if you decide you want more of the white on this then uh, let it dry and go back over it with another coat and it'll just get richer and richer uh, but I thought this was enough for me I was happy with the finish that I ended up with and now we're going to move on to our last project which is this little uh, vintage magazine rack. Um, I love this one. It, it was in pretty rough shape and ended up having to do some wood filling and sanding on it uh, in a couple of places. But, um, but overall, I just, uh, just kind of lightly sanded the whole surface and so that my paint would have a little more to adhere to. So once I got this sanded down, then uh, I just took a damp cloth and, and wiped it down well since I had already uh, cleaned the surface before I did my sanding. Guys, I hope that you'll let me know in the comments if you see something that you would like for me to change that I'm doing. Uh, someone uh, mentioned to me uh, yesterday that uh, I was out of focus a lot on my last video and... Uh, they were absolutely right. I, I noticed that myself, and I'm I'm sorry that that um, it's taking me a little while to get used to the camera. I I love to craft, and I'm completely comfor comfortable crafting, uh, but I am not tech savvy at all, and and that's just my my biggest uh, problem that I'm having with this. So, uh, but I'll get there, and um, let me know if you think I did any better in this one. I'm trying to change my setup a lot and uh, trying to really watch that I don't get out of frame and I again I really appreciated that comment because every time that um, that I hear your take on it, it it really helps me know what the viewers want so again I really appreciate that and you know who you are um, I hope that you guys are enjoying these videos and I hope that um, if you haven't subscribed that you will su subscribe uh, that way you'll be notified every time that I upload a video and I'm trying to do that at least every couple days um, sometimes more uh, and this here is uh, the Waverly Agave Blue chalk paint and I love this color and I probably overused this color but it, it really is a pretty blue uh, it's it's good for spring and bright enough for spring but also just not so so bright blue that um that it stands out too much because i'm just not a flashy colored person i like calm colors and i think that this color is really calm especially when we add that white wax that obviously i have to add on this piece because there's so much detail for it to settle down into so there's no way that i could not do that on this one 
So I just give this a, a good coat of, of that agave blue and it covers pretty well for one coat. I didn't have to do another coat. Uh, but I give it a good coat inside and out. And the only thing that I really don't paint on this is the very bottom of the inside. The rest I was able to reach, and I could have reached that, but I just didn't didn't think it was necessary. Uh, but I'm I'm just giving this a good coat all over, and um, and then it'll be ready for the next step once it dries. And I'm using that same. Uh, the same Krylon clear wax here that I've added white to and uh, because this is a wet wax um, then when I do my rubbing and rub this off uh, sometimes it will pull just a little bit of color and that's why I didn't do any distressing on this piece after I painted it because I want it to pull that color off. And where it doesn't pull enough off, I just add some more white wax. And if you let that, that sit a little longer, then it'll really pull it off. And I think when I do one of these sides, you'll be able to see a little better how, how much that pulled off in the paint and, and just made a really natural looking distress. Now, if you don't want it to pull it off, then you would clear coat it first. Uh, when you're using these wet waxes uh, but like I said I wanted that to happen here and uh, it it actually pulled off just what I wanted and here is the side I think where you can see a little bit better how it's pulling some of that color off and it's just such a natural distress and I think that if you like distress you'll be happy with that and if you want those edges distressed just rub those a little harder and and it'll be a really pretty distress and here it is finished and uh, displayed with the rest thank you for watching and I really hope you guys have a good evening and hope to see you in the next video God bless you